Okay, guys. Uh, so let's just, I went ahead and Googled Golan Heights uh, simply because um, I wanted to start looking into exactly what it was. Interesting here, as I, as I typed it into Google, what comes up for Golan Heights. But when I typed it in for under uh, just the Bing uh, search bar, which is on my computer as well, um, we, we have news about Golan Heights here, which is pretty interesting. Um, so Israel prepared to reopen the Golan Crossing now that the Syrian government forces have regained control of the area from the rebels. So, um, so a lot going on in that area. Um, if you guys get a chance to look at some of uh, what these um, articles are saying. But it's, it is interesting the difference between the two search bars um, in regards to this. So let me just come back to the other one. Um, because uh, we're just going in and taking a look at Golan Heights. You can see the pictures here and um, and really what my bird's eye view would have looked like looking over uh, the area. It's, uh, it was, it's a beautiful area uh, over there. But let's see what it says here. It's uh, Golan Heights or simply Golan, okay, is a region in the Levant which uh, just means that it's a ge that's a geographical term referring to a large area in the eastern Mediterranean. Um, so in a region in the Levant, it's spanning about 1,800 square kilometers or 690 square miles. Um, so it, it goes in to tell what, you know, what the borders are of this. The earliest evidence of human habitation dates to the upper um, uh, pa Paleolithic period. And according to the Bible, an, an Amorite kingdom in Bashan was conquered by the Israelites during the reign of King Og, O.G. Throughout the Old Testament period, the Golan was the focus of a power struggle between the kings of Israel and the Armenians who were based uh, near modern-day Damascus. Uh, so there is some type of struggle over this property. Um, so back in the 1967, in 1967, the Six-Day War, the western two-thirds of the Golan Heights had been occupied and administered by Israel, whereas the eastern third had remained under control of the Syrian, uh, Syrian Arab Republic. But they did end up doing some type of uh, ceasefire and they implemented what they call a purple line. And the purple line is just basically the de facto border between the two countries, uh, which I thought was interesting. So, of course, this is wiki. You guys can go in and take a look at it yourself. Uh, really interesting uh, pictures here to show you uh, what it looks like. And here, let's just take a look now. Um, this is the Sea of Galilee here, and so it uh, it rises all the way up into this area, all the way up to Lebanon, into Syria, and then all the way back just north of Jordan. Um, so it's it's really interesting what they have. Now I would have in in that um, experience, I would have been on this side looking into this particular area. And so this area, as large as it looks, they're saying it only is about 690 um, square miles. And actually, that's pretty large. That's a pretty large area. So moving on, um, looking at the Golan Heights. Uh, oh, that's the same one. When I pulled up more information on the Golan Heights, it said it was biblical Bashan which I thought was interesting uh, because in the Bible, we hear about the cows of Bashan and we hear about the oaks of Bashan. Now, interesting, when he asked me, when the Lord Jesus asked me to look to my left, what did I see? I saw rolling hills and I saw large groupings of trees. Remember? So, um, so was I looking right in over near this area already? Um, I'm not sure, but it appears to be. So, um, so the Golan Heights is identified as Bashan. And this is just some other information in here. It's got some great pictures. Um, beautiful little area. 
So this is biblicalplaces.com. You guys can go take a look at that. So I had to look up Bashan then. I needed to know what, what that was all about. Tell me what that was all about. So I just typed Bashan into uh, the search engine and I, I pulled up Wiki because that's typically where I go first. So the Bashan is a biblical place first mentioned in Numbers 21 where Og, okay, it's that same king, the king of Bashan came out against the Israelites at the time of their entrance into the promised land, but was utterly routed, meaning he was defeated. So Og's Bashan, um, okay, it's giving you the borders of it again. We don't want to talk about that. So we'll, we'll continue to go down. Um, now, it speaks of, um, let's see. It speaks of, um, in the Bashan, Golan, one of its cities, became a uh, Levitical city and a city of refuge. And I thought, well, what is a Levitical city? That's what I wanted to know. And so I just clicked on it, and it pulled up Levitical cities. Okay, the Levitical cities were 48 cities in ancient Israel set aside for the tribe of Levi who were not allocated their own territorial land when the Israelites entered the promised land. Okay, so it goes in to identify that um, these 48 cities, um, of which six would function as cities of refuge to which a manslayer could flee, meaning... Um, meaning that they could go in for refuge and people could not pass by the gates. So each settlement was comprised uh, of a walled city and the common land around it for pasture measured radially as 1,000 cubits in each direction or as a square measuring 2,000 cubits along each side. The land for the cities was to be donated by the host tribe and was allocated to the Levites according to their tribal subdivisions. So, um, so 13 cities were for the Aaronite priestly division, which is the Levitical priests, um, the descendants from uh, Aaron, Moses' brother, and then 13 for the Gershonite division, 10 for the Kohathite division, and then 12 for the... Uh, Mayor all right division. Now these are sons of Levi. This one says son of Levi. This one is son of Levi. And this one is son of Levi. So when I scrolled down, I was looking to see where the um, areas are for these city of refuge. And each, if you take a look, this is all 12 tribes. All 12 tribes were regarded and supposed to have areas of refuge. Okay, so Asher is showing four in these cities. Benjamin is showing four in those cities. Dan in those cities, and it goes right on down. Judah is the biggest one. You can see um, that it's got quite a, quite a few more, um, and it goes right on down. I thought it was fascinating to see what this was all about. Um, so cities of refuge. Um, okay, so Golan means Bashan, which means cities of refuge. It means um, a place of safety, okay? So when I looked at Bashan, um, just to kind of continue to take a look at the Bashan, it's a fertile and wooded place, so it's got a bunch of trees, and it was uh, allotted to half-tribe of Manasseh. So the reason why I have this particular uh, thing pulled up, and you guys can take a look at it later, um, is because this shows where the tribes were. Like here, part of Dan was here, Asher was here, Naphtali, Zebulon, Manasseh. Here's half tribe of Manasseh, because here's the other half tribe of Manasseh. Um, Zebulon, Ishkar, Gad, and it goes on down. Here's Gad, Ephraim, here's the other part of Dan, Benjamin, Judah, Reuben, Simon, and how, and where they were spread out and put in, in the land, which I thought was fascinating to see, which is the only reason why I have this up here for you guys. 
Um, but let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Um, because now we're talking about two baskets of fruit. Now, when I went in and typed in two baskets of fruit offering in the Bible, it brought me up to Deuteronomy 26. And so there's a couple of things here I want to talk about. Um, Deuteronomy 26 is about offerings of first fruits and tithes. And it shall be when you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance, and you possess it and dwell in it, that you shall take some of the first of all the produce of the ground, which you shall bring from your land that the Lord your God is giving you, and put it in a basket, and go to the place where, where the Lord your God chooses to make his name abide. And you shall go to the one who is the priest in those days and say to him, I declare to the Lord your God that I have come to the county which the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. Now, guys, I was with the Lord Jesus Christ. I was already with the priest. Um, and so when I said I didn't know where the, were we in a temple, where were we in a synagogue, what a church, where were we? Well, we were in a place where um, where where the Lord God chose to make his name abide, obviously. Um, so the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm with great terror and signs and wonders. And he brought us to this place and has given us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now behold, I have brought the first fruits of the land which you, O Lord, have given me. Um so when I pulled up first fruits, um, we know that the uh, the Hebrews have a term bakar yirim for the first fruits, um, and it's talking about the firstborn. Okay, and when I went into Wiki on the first fruits, um, I was taking a look at first fruits were a type of offering that was akin to but distinct from uh, teruma uh, gedola which was an agricultural tithe. The first fruits discussed in this of the Talmud was a sacrificial gift brought to the altar. Um, so I thought that was interesting. The major obligation to bring first fruits to the temple began at the festival of Shavuot and continued until the festival of Sukkot, which is where we are right now. Um, this tithe was limited to the traditional seven agricultural products, wheat, barley, grapes in the form of wine, figs, and pomegranates and olives in the form of oil, oil and dates that were grown in Israel. Okay, so I thought that was interesting because I had said, remember guys, I had said, I thought it was a peach um, from what I could see in that basket. Um, so I thought that was very, very interesting. That's what a pomegranate uh, looked like. Now, I don't know how big they are. I, don't, I have no idea. I don't think I've ever seen a pomegranate that I'm aware of here. Um, but we had something in that basket. It was not wine. It was not grapes. It was not wheat uh, or anything like that. It was, um, it was something else. So now um, I want to take a look just at the very, very last part here. This is um, this is talking about uh, look down from your holy habitation from heaven and bless your people Israel and the land which you have given us, just as you swore to our fathers, a land flowing with milk and honey. And this day the Lord your God commands you to, to observe these statutes and judgments. Therefore you shall be careful to observe them with all your heart and with all your soul. Today you have proclaimed the Lord to be your God and that you will walk in his ways and keep his statutes, his commandments, and his judgments, that you will obey his voice. So today the Lord has proclaimed you to be his special people, just as he promised you that you should Keep all of his commandments and that he shall set you high above all nations which he has made in praise, in name and in honor, that you may be a holy people to the Lord your God, just as he has spoken. Do you guys hear that thunder? I got a storm getting ready to come here. So, guys, I wanted to just share all of that information with you um, and hoping that this would be interesting. Now, when I had that dream about the transfer of wealth. Um, I'm not sure that that was physical monetary wealth. It could be in regards to the Golan, to the places of refuge, 
or it could be talking about places of safety, which we are aware of, or it could be the transfer of his gifts into his first fruits at this time. Bye.